Uh, hello everyone. In this lecture, we will uh, introduce the residue of isolated singularities and the meromorphic functions. So first, uh, uh, let's give the definition. For an isolated singularity, z equals a of a holomorphic function f z defined on zero less than z minus a less than r for some r greater than zero. We define uh, the residue of f z at z equals a, which is denote, denoted by R E S uh, subscript a, a f s. R E S subscript A F equals one over two pi I. The line integral along the circle with radius R centered at zero, F Z D Z. For any zero less than R less than capital R. Uh, so first. Uh, let's make a remark. Uh, remark one. Uh, the definition. This is well defined by uh, cauchy gusar theorem. Uh, to be more precise, that means uh, the definition of residue is independent of the choice of uh, small r. Okay, which is same as the uh, the uniqueness of the Lorentz series expansion. And remark two, just tell you the close relation between Lorentz series expansion and the residue. So by uh, so of course first we have a Laurent series expansion for the holomorphic function f defined on puncture disk. So by integrating the Laurent series f z equals sum, uh, summation n from negative infinity to positive infinity c n z minus a to n's power o f z turn by turn actually uh, here I would like to ask why you can do this a quick answer is because you have absolute convergence in the uh, shrinked domain, then you can do uh, the integration and the interchange of the integration with the summation. And the using. And using the fact the integration z minus a along the circle, oh, sorry, here uh, it's a typo. 
the circle is centered at A. To case power dz is theta equals zero to pi a plus i e i theta by parametrization minus a to case power d a plus i e i theta, which is integration for theta from zero to two pi r to k plus one's power times i times exponential i k plus one theta, which is two pi i for k equals negative one and zero for k e uh, different from negative one. Oh, just in a moment, we will, I will uh, kind of more rigorously tell you what is a line integral in the complex analysis and how to parameterize it, how to evaluate the residue for and the integral for some uh, special case. And because of this, we have residue, just the coefficient of uh, the uh, coefficient in the long series indexed by negative 1. Okay, um, so next, uh, so I, uh, I want to make some remark, but probably I, it's better to leave it later. So proposition, first let's prove the following proposition for a uh, holomorphic function with an isolated singularity the residue of the function at the isolated singularity is equal to the coefficient with the uh, index negative one or minus one of the Lorentz series. Expansion of the function on the degenerate annulus of zero inside radius centered at the isolated. Singularity. Yeah, actually, this is just exactly the remark, but stated in uh, rigorous words. Okay, so the remark I want to make earlier is that, remark one, uh, for a holomorphic function, F uh, the question questions in the Laurent series uh, 
is uh, are not uh, unique intrinsically. Except C negative one. Actually, uh, this is some not so rigorous way to define an important property. What does unique intrinsically means? Because we are in a holomorphic category. Um, so suppose, so let's state it uh, more rigorously. Suppose. For simply suppose f is defined in uh, the unit disk centered at zero, and uh, g is Holomorphic map, holomorphic function, uh, also defined on the unit disk. And uh, such that, okay, so for simplicity, probably I can see. Okay, such that the image of the unit disk is contained in the unit disk. Okay, then you can compose uh, F with G. Okay, sorry. Uh, here I should assume it, it's a uh, holomorphic only in the puncture disk. F is with the pole at uh, oh, not necessarily has pole. Yeah, that's it. Okay, consider uh, G F compose G. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so F G then then we can expand F compose G near the singularity, probably uh, Z minus G Z minus B to K's power C prime K k from infinity, negative infinity to positive infinity, and f also has uh, the round series expansion. And we assume g uh, b is 0. Okay, after this setting, all I want to see is C K prime is different from C K. Okay, so here's K. In general, but C negative one must be C negative one. C negative one prime must be C negative one. So in the modern language it just means the coefficient, let's go back to the black color, the coefficient C negative 1 is a biholomorphic invariant. This is very important because
because people are interested in invariants, and uh, more importantly, people are interested in are interested in the computable invariants. So this invariant can distinguish two holomorphic map up to uh, biholomorphisms. Okay, so here um, probably I, I would like to see a little bit more about what is what does invariance mean. Invariance usually you have a set of objects f one, f two, blah blah, and then probably f one is equivalent to f two equivalent relation. Okay, so if you mod this equivalent relation, you have a quotient of these f objects, and then if you can define some map from the whole thing, the quotient to some other sets, then you just map this to, then this is called invariance. This is a regular uh, abstract algebraic way to define it, but naively just means, just remember the following sentence. Those invariants uh, cannot distinguish the objects and uh, the equivalent transformation. For example, in holomorphic category, if you have two holomorph two holomorphic functions which are biholomorphic equivalent, that means you cannot tell them. Okay, so then the invariance this invariance must be invariant. Okay, probably this is too hard, but that's indeed the whole idea principle guiding the mathematics in 20th century and even now. The reason is the whole set of objects is too complicated. People want to distinguish that. Okay, next uh, I want to make another remark which is related to how to um, compute the residue by some other method instead of uh, the line integral. So suppose fz. This is related to the observation we made above that the residue just a coefficient um, C negative one in the Lorentz series expansion. So suppose F can be read down as uh, this one. So now we assume it's a pole. Uh, we see negative K different from zero, k at least one, then z minus a to k's power times fz. To n's power. So this is a holomorphic function, which is an infinite version of polynomial. Then how to get c negative one You just do k minus one zero two. Right? And 
then evaluate at the point A. Okay, thus for a pole of F Z of order K greater than zero at Z equals A, the residue is one over k minus 1 factorial k minus 1 derivative complex derivative of function fz times z minus a to k's power and then evaluate at the point a uh, most importantly if fz has a simple pole at A, then the residue of F at A, just the limit of Z minus A times FZ. As before, we said that this must be some positive integer the absolute value of this limit must be a some positive integer ok now this gives you uh, the meaning of that limit that's the residue uh, usually we will use this form for a simple pole because you don't need to take a derivative when, whenever you take a derivative it's much harder and usually we use some other way to compute this and for this probably I need to uh, specify what is simple pole simple pole just pole or order one and then let me do a remark or oh, remark one. The formula is not true when A is a, A is an essential singularity. But you don't need to remember this because if you apply the formula, then you'll find the limit that exists. Then you you can stop there. Okay, and uh, immediately we have the following residue theorem. Basically, this is just application of. cauchy theorem and uh, the definition of residue. Suppose omega is a bounded open subset of C with piecewise smooth boundary partial omega and uh, U is an open neighborhood of the topological closure omega bar or omega in C. Suppose uh, A1 to AP are distinct points in omega and fz is a holomorphic function on the set u minus a1 to ap then the integral along the boundary 
equals 2 pi i times residue a j f okay if you draw a picture so I will not pr uh, if I draw a picture then you see how to prove this immediately so suppose you have domain omega with piecewise smooth uh, boundary and you have of course you might have some inside boundary and then you have some points AP okay and then the uh, theorem says the integral along the boundary so in our case you uh, had two boundary gamma 1 gamma 2 and with suitable orientation and then the other side just residue so how to prove this you just circle around each point with disk okay and then you so let's okay let's prove this denote denote green disk by D K K is from A to P. Okay, and then consider uh, U consider Omega, sorry, Omega. Subtract uh, D one union D two union all the way up to D P. Okay, you just consider the uh, green part outside the sorry the blue part outside the green discs, and then with orientation here. this way okay then the uh, by the function f is holomorphic on omega minus those small disks hence Cauchy Gussard so theorem tells you that the boundary of omega minus the boundary of disk but now the disk uh, is equivalent with the counterclockwise orientation instead of the clockwise orientation here and uh, minus summation along the boundary of dk uh, fz dz k from 1 to p and then you have this but now By the definition, what is this? This just summation of residues. So basically, the proof is tautological. 
just an application of essentially Stokes' theorem. Okay, next we introduce a special type of uh, functions with isolated singularities. So definition, suppose U is an open subset of C and uh, E is a discrete subset E, a holomorphic function f z on u minus e is called a meromorphic function on u if each a in e is a pole. So the singularity is predictable. You don't have any uh, weird essential singularity because uh, we do have some people do have some study of the essential singularities, but for our purpose, uh, in the object geometry or the uh, interesting objects, usually. We only consider poles. Now, uh, I will make a remark. Remark one. Remark. So another way to state meromorphic function is f is meromorphic uh, on. For example, on u minus e, just in the above setting, if and only if for each point a in e, there's a neighborhood mm, of, uh, let's call it da, oa such that f is g divided by h for all point z in da where g and h are holomorphic functions in da so basically, meromorphic function just quotients or holomorphic functions, and based on this, we can generalize it. Meromorphic functions in higher dimensions or in several complex variables. F z one z two z three, for example, is meromorphic 
if locally f is g divided by h, of course, for different points, you have different choice of g and h. Where g and h are holomorphic. So this is a uh, high dimension definition. I will not give you the rigorous definition, but uh, it tells you the essential of the definition for higher dimension generalization of meromorphic functions. Okay, a remark or remark? So you see from this, we go from global to local. If you have Miramov function locally, you can have different expression as quotients. Then inverse question is if u is covered by i, i from 0 to infinity, and uh, uh, on di we have gi divided by hi, and uh, on di intersection dj, gi over hi minus gj over hj, is holomorphic for all i j. Then a natural question is, can you find a holomorphic function capital F on U such that F minus G I H I is holomorphic. This makes sense in dimension one and also in higher dimensions. This is called the Kusum problem. Which is a starting point, one of the starting points of several complex variables. Okay, I will not talk about this, but uh, all I want to show is this is local to global. Usually, for from local to global, um, it's very hard, but that's the most uh, interesting part of a lot of theory. For example, uh, if you do differential geometry, you know gauss bonnet theorem. How to... So one way to interpret the gauss bonnet theorem is that you collect the information locally, which is curvature, and you get the information globally, which is a topology or the manifold, the Euler, Euler characteristic, Euler number. So that's a very astonishing property. And later on, Chen generalized it to gauss bonnet chen theorem. Along the same way, you collect the local property. Usually, people do the, the curvature, and then globally, you do have the topology. And then you have ideal single theorem. One way is uh, the uh, dynamic property. The other side is a topological property. OK, I will not get into this. It's just want to give you some uh, idea of what we are doing. and. Uh, and a larger background, because later on you, you might need to choose some topic to uh, prepare your reading report. So 
at least you need to decide which part is your interest. Where do you want to go? Okay. Uh, next, let's recall the line integral in complex analysis. So you, suppose you have gamma, which is a, a without loss of generative, we can assume it's smooth, and you have a holomorphic function f. Gamma f is holomorphic. Okay, then we can talk about this integral. So how to define it? Recall the usual definition for the uh, Riemann integral, you just cut it into pieces, limit, uh, so n goes to infinity, summation, and uh, delta gamma i, the length of delta gamma i times fz. Uh, i times dz i i from one from zero to n. So you, let's draw a picture. You cut this into n pieces, and for each one you can define. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. My bad. Probably it's better to use this times d. Uh, so this is delta z uh, one. This is delta z two, delta z three, delta z four delta z n and you have holomorphic function f suppose this is the origin so okay so here you have f oh it's nothing about the origin you have f z n here so think about how do you do the um, line integral so oh some uh, oh real function so fz times dz and if you view this as uh, all variables are real and all functions are real this is exactly the definition for Riemann integral okay then of course if you take a limit you need to cut this to smaller and smaller pieces and you need to verify that the limit exists is doable. And then that's a definition for uh, the Riemann for the line integral in a uh, holomorphic function. And uh, of course, there's another way to interpret this, probably which makes life easier. That is, parametrize gamma by uh, gamma t, which is uh, x t y t. Okay, then what do you have? This one, gamma f z d z. Actually, this is uh. Okay, suppose this starting from uh t 
is from alpha to beta. Therefore, the integration is from alpha to beta f times fz. Z is uh, gamma t times dz. dz is d gamma t. And then if you simplify it, you have f gamma t dot gamma prime t dt. Notice that this is a complex number or uh, topologically this is a vector in R2 and this is complex value, complex number vector in R2 and the dot product uh, is a complex multiplication and then what you have this is a complex number which is same as vector in R2 okay then you have line integral of some vector valued function. So that's how we calculate the uh, line integral in the complex analysis. Okay, next I want to introduce uh, some uh, important uh, parameterization. Suppose Gamma is a circle uh, so let's denote by partial D A um, sorry D A R with radius R which is uh, Z minus A equals R And of course, we need to give orientation. Usually, we give the counterclockwise orientation. OK, so here you have A, you have R. The orientation is counterclockwise. And how to parameterize it? We can parameterize it by gamma gamma equals A plus R E I theta. Theta is from zero to two pi. That coincides with the picture. And then if you have some integral, line integral, then by the previous uh, uh, interpretation, we can write down as the uh, Integral single integral from uh, for theta from zero to two pi, and uh, f a plus r e i theta d a plus r e i theta and the theta from zero to two pi f a plus r e i theta times Notice that here r is a constant, theta are constants, the variable is, a and r are constants, the variable are theta, 
and you take differential or theta, you have Okay, uh, let me change the color a little bit. D A plus R E I theta. And now you have R E I theta times I D theta. The I comes from comes from the uh, coefficient of the power in the exponential function. Okay, so this is a uh, usual uh, formula. Oh, I, I still want to make another remark. Yeah, I can make it here. Actually, I can raise it as a question. How to interpret um, Cauchy's integral formula by residue theorem? Hint is you view f z over z minus a in Cauchy's integral formula as f in residue theorem. Okay, next uh, let's come to uh, uh, the application of residue theorem, is, uh, um, especially to calculate some special integral. So first, uh, just give you some <laughs> philosophical def uh, discussion. So why we care about Cauchy integral formula? Because most of the time we are not able to calculate integrals except very special integrals. So for example, we know how to calculate this integral, which is square root of pi. But for example, if you have one here, this is difficult. You have numerical calculation, but most of the time you don't have uh, close the formula, analytic form formula. And uh, then the Cauchy integral formula is used transforming some harder integral into some uh, easy ones. Case one. Let's look at the uh, Cauchy integral formula. We talk about the Cauchy integral formula like uh, the ratio theorem, but essentially they are the same thing, with different names and the different emphasizes. Okay, now. What does Cauchy integral formula tells you? Tells you, uh, you have part 
counterclockwise orientations. So the line integral along gamma, along C3, or theta, equals along C1 plus along C2 plus along C3. And the function is f dz, f dz. Okay, then what's the good part of it? The good part is originally C3 might be a very uh, curved, so it has weird shape. But C1, C2, C3 are circles which means that we have exactly need a parametrization and uh, we can compute easily just in some sense compute easily Okay, and uh, another thing is, uh, sometimes uh, for some special case, case uh, if you choose circle, oh, later on when we have some explicit example, we will uh, discuss this more, but basically, if you have this and take limit r goes to zero for some for some holomorphic function f defined on a puncture uh, disk, you do have this formula. We'll talk about this later when we do estimate. So basically, just the idea is make the uncomputable thing to be computable. This is very important in mathematics. Even with uh, help from computer science, uh, sometimes a closed formula is still very important. OK, later on. We will uh, introduce a residue theorem. Theory just means how uh, how to compute some integral by calculating the residues. But first, we want to introduce some uh, special shape. Or domains we might use later. Sorry. So we might have this shape domain and uh, shape loop, and we might have this shape loop. This is also very typical. This is another one. This is one. The basic idea is like the following. Uh, for the uh, residue theorem, choose a clever, choose a loop choose a contour in a clever way such that uh, 
one part is uh, easy is what we want to calculate and uh, the other part is The other part can be estimate estimated with zero as a limit. Um, we will uh, demonstrate this idea or the principle uh, for the following each cases. But then the main point is usually for the counter, of course, you have the residue part. Residue part usually is computable. And then for the counterpart, you might have two parts. So one part is what you want to calculate, the other part is the arrow turn. So this is the arrow. For the arrow turn, you need to control it with zero as its limit. Otherwise, if your error turn is too big, your calculation is useless. That's the reason why we have such weird domains. Because according to different functions, you need to make some special contour to really concentrate your value to the residue instead of spread out to the whole part of your loop. Okay, um, I will stop here. Next time, we will discuss from the basic examples of the uh, special line integrals all the way to the uh, typical application of uh, residue theory to do some really good stuff.